how to use AM57X or DRA7X DFU boot mode. The AM57X and DRA7X devices support USB peripheral boot, which can download software from a USB host. This video demonstrates how to flash image with U-Boot DFU function using the USB peripheral boot mode from a Linux host. All the information referred in this video is buried in the TI Processor SDK U-Boot User's Guide and AM57X Technical Reference Menu. If you are already familiar with some U-Boot basics and then just want to quickly get your hands on DFU to flash system software image to your board, this video is right for you. What is DFU? DFU stands for Device Firmware Upgrade. It is a mechanism for upgrading device firmware through USB. In this mechanism, the USB device first informs the host of its DFU capability. Then the host transfers the firmware to the device, and the device flashes the firmware to the target storage, such as eMMC or NAND. The DFU specifications are defined by USB IF. It is supported in U-Boot. AM57X or DRA7X devices support peripheral boot mode through USB 1 interface. We can use this capability to download U-Boot image from a USB host, then use the U-Boot DFU feature to download and flash the system image. The Gcento 6 EVM uses DRA7X devices and supports USB 1 interface in device mode. We will use this EVM in this video. The procedure presented in this video is applicable to AM57X devices as well. In this video, I will demonstrate using DFU to flash Z image to SD card first partition from a Linux host. Using a Windows host is not covered in this video. The information of using Windows host is in the TI Processors SDK U-Boot User's Guide. First, let's look at the DFU flow to get an idea of the flashing process. If AM57X sysboot is set to USB peripheral boot mode and the board USB 1 port is connected to a Linux host, once power on, the ROM will present itself as a USB device and be enumerated by the host as the wait period to be 0451D013. Then the host uses the utility USB boot standalone to download the U-boot SPL to the board. The ROM executes the SPL binary. The SPL will then present itself as a DFU device and be enumerated by the host as the wait period 0451D022. Next, the host uses the utility DFU util to download the uboot.mg binary to the board. On the board, the SPL executes the uboot.mg binary. Before we download the firmware, now we need to tell uboot where to store the firmware MMC SD card, NAND, or QuasPy. Then uboot will present itself as a new DFU device and be enumerated by the host. The wait period is still the same as that from the U-Boot SPL. Finally, the host uses the utility DFU util again to download the firmware to the board, and the U-Boot flashes the firmware to the target storage. To summarize this process, AM57X ROM uses USB peripheral boot to download U-Boot to RAM. Then U-Boot uses its DFU function to download the firmware image and flashes it to the target storage. The whole process is explained in the TI Processor SDK U-Boot User's Guide. Here's the link. It talks how to enable DFU feature in U-Boot and how to compile USB boot standalone tool and how to write a firmware to SD card MMC, NAND, and QuasPy. Here's the outline of the preparation on both the host and the board. On Linux host, we need to install a couple of tools. USB boot standalone. I will explain how to compile it in the next slide. We also need to install DFU utils. It should be available on most Linux distributions.
on Ubuntu, we can use apt-get to install it. On Linux host, we also have to prepare a few binary images to use. We need to enable DFU feature in uBoot and then rebuild it. I will have more details on this later. We also need to prepare the firmware images to flash. I will use Linux kernel Z image in this demo, since I always have it available. Next, we need to connect the Decento 6 EVM to the Linux host PC, and set the proper sysboot mode. Since this demo shows how to flash Z image to the SD card, I will show how to partition the SD card so that uBoot DFU can use it. Here is the procedure to compile USB boot utility on the Linux host. It is documented in the TI Processor SDK uBoot Users Guide. The four commands listed here fetch and compile the USB boot utility. Finally, you might want to copy the executable USB boot standalone into a folder which is in your executable path, so you don't have to type in the full path when using it. To install DFU util on the Ubuntu host PC is simple, just use this apt-get command. Now we need to enable DFU in uBoot and then recompile it. The uBoot source code is provided in the TI Processor Linux SDK package. You can download from ti.com. First, run these four commands to launch the uBoot config interface and then navigate to Boot Images menu and then enable the option Enable SPL with DFU to load the binaries to memory device, as highlighted on the top screenshot. We also disable the hard shell option to reduce the memory footprint. The option is under command line interface menu, as shown in the screenshot at the bottom. Then save the config and run make a command to build the uBoot. The uBoot SPL.bin image is under SPL folder, and the uBoot.mg image is right under the uBoot tab folder. Here's the picture of the Decento 6 EVM, which has a DRE7X device on it. We will use this EVM to demonstrate in this video. The USB 1 port is on the left side of the board. It has a super speed micro AB receptacle. The board has a label USB 1 for it. We will connect this port to the Linux PC USB port for the DFU communication. We only need a high-speed micro-B to Type-A USB cable in here, since ROM only supports up to high-speed USB. On the top side of the board, there's another mini-AB USB port, which is labeled as a terminal. This is the UART console port. We use a mini-B to Type-A USB cable to connect this port to the Linux PC to get the UART console of the board. Next to it is the reset button. It can be used to reboot the board. We don't need to use it in this demo though. The micro SD card slot is on the other side of the board, right under the reset button. We will format a micro SD card and put it in this slot to store the flashed image in this demo. I will show how to format the SD card later. Next to the reset button is the power jack. The board uses a 12 volt power supply. These are the deep switches for the sysboot setting. It is labeled as SW2. I will show how to set it for USB peripheral boot in the following slide. As I just explained, we need two USB connections between the Decento 6 EVM and the Linux host PC. One for the board UART console, one for the DFU communication. To use USB peripheral boot mode, please set the deep switches SW2 as shown in this picture. The sysboot setting is explained in the AM57X technical reference menu, table 33-8. This demo shows flashing a file to microSD card first partition. The microSD card should be partitioned to two partitions. This is required by uboot env dfu out info mmc, which defines two partitions for mmc SD card. The first partition should be formatted to FAT VFAT format. Processor Linux SDK has a script bin slash create SD card .sh, which can be used as a reference for partitioning the SD card. Next, I will show how to do it. First, connect the SD card to the Linux PC, and then check the DMSD log and see it's enumerated as SDD. 
Next, run the create SD card script. Select the 3, which is for SDD, and then select 2 for two partitions. This might take a while depending on how big the SD card you use. I type in N to exit at here. Now the SD card is ready and I put it in the G6 EVM SD card slot. Here are the steps to use DFU. Step 1 runs on the host to download SPL. Step 2 runs on the host to download uboot.mg. Step 3 runs on the EVM board to set the DFU target device. Step 4 runs on the host to download the final firmware. Next, I will show the procedure step by step. We have a two terminal windows here. I will use the left one for the EVM UART and the right one for running the host commands. First, start Minicom on the left window to bring up the EVM UART console. On the host, I have all the images in a folder. Now power on the EVM on the host to check the message log. The EVM is enumerated as product value. And then here are the VID and the PID. Now transfer the U-boot SPL to the EVM. Now check the DMessage log again on the host. The EVM is enumerated as USB download gadget. Now on the host, transfer the uboot.mg to the EVM. We must immediately switch to the left window and press any key to stop uboot. We only have two seconds here, otherwise the uboot will continue run. On the EVM, now set the DFU target to be MMC. Here is the MMC DFU auto setting table. We will use auto setting 9 to store the image. Now start DFU on the EVM. On the host, check the message log again and see a new DFU device is enumerated. Now transfer the image from the host. Now the flashing is done. Take out the SD card from the EVM and then connect it to a PC and then check it's the first partition. We see the file size on the SD card matches the one on the host. You might notice the file name on the SD card is not the image. That is because the file name is defined by the DFU auto setting table. This is all what I want to show for how to use the DFU. Here are some links for your reference. Thanks for watching.